What if I told you there's a planet five to ten times the size of Earth hiding in our solar system right now? Something so massive it's pulling distant frozen worlds into aligned orbits. We've been searching for it for nearly a decade, but it keeps slipping through our fingers like a ghost in the cosmic dark? What if this invisible giant has been out there all along, just beyond the reach of our most powerful telescopes, waiting to rewrite everything we thought we knew about our celestial neighborhood? Stick around, because what happened next will blow your mind. If you're captivated by the hunt for Planet Nine and want to see more mind-bending cosmic mysteries that challenge everything we think we know about space, smash that like button and let the universe know you are watching. Every click helps fuel the search for answers hiding in the darkest corners of our solar system. So let me ask you something: Have you ever lost something in your own house? You know it's there somewhere. You remember putting it down. But no matter how hard you look, it just refuses to show up. Now imagine that feeling, but instead of your house, we're talking about the entire solar system, and instead of your keys, we're talking about a planet, a whole planet, something massive enough to bend the orbits of distant frozen worlds, something that shouldn't be able to hide, and yet for nearly ten years it has. This is the story of Planet Nine, and trust me, it gets stranger the deeper we go. For years now, something bizarre has been happening at the edge of our solar system, way out past Neptune in the cold, dark reaches where sunlight barely exists. There's a collection of icy objects drifting through space. These aren't comets; they're not asteroids. They're what scientists call extreme trans-Neptunian objects, frozen remnants from the birth of our solar system, wandering in the void. But here's the thing: they're not wandering randomly. Their orbits are aligned. They're tilted in similar ways. They're all pointing in roughly the same direction, and that should not be happening. In a stable solar system, objects that far out should be scattered everywhere. Their paths should be chaotic, unpredictable, spread out across the sky in every possible direction. But they're not. They are clustered. And when astronomers saw this pattern, they knew something was wrong, or more accurately, something was out there. Something big, something hidden, something pulling on these distant objects like an invisible hand, guiding them into formation. The only explanation that made sense was this: there's a massive planet out there we've never seen. Now, before you start thinking this is just wild speculation, let me tell you who figured this out. In 2016, two astronomers named Mike Brown and Konstantin Batagin weren't even looking for a new planet. They were just trying to understand why these distant objects were acting so weird, and when they ran the math, everything pointed to one conclusion: there had to be something out there, something at least five times more massive than Earth, maybe even ten times, and it had to be orbiting somewhere between 400 and 800 times farther from the sun than we are. Just to put that in perspective, Neptune is only about 30 times farther than Earth, so this thing wouldn't just be distant. It would be in a region of space we've barely even explored. They called it Planet Nine, and here's where it gets interesting. Mike Brown is the same guy who got Pluto kicked out of the Planet Club. The man literally wrote a book called How I Killed Pluto and Why It Had It Coming. So for him to turn around and say there's another planet out there, a real one this time, that meant something. This wasn't a headline grab. This was serious science backed by serious math. And the moment that paper came out, the hunt was on. Telescopes all over the world started scanning the skies. Astronomers began digging through old data, hoping maybe they'd already photographed it without realizing. Even amateur astronomers and citizen scientists jumped in, combing through databases and images, looking for anything that didn't belong. And you know what happened? The more people looked, the more the pieces started to fit. More extreme trans-Neptunian objects were discovered. Some of them had the same strange alignments. A few even had retrograde orbits, meaning they were moving in the opposite direction of everything else in the solar system. And every time a new one showed up, the math kept pointing back to the same idea: something big, something far, something hidden. But here's the problem, and it's a big one: nobody had actually seen it. Years went by. More predictions came out. More search areas were ruled out. But every scan, every image, every attempt to spot Planet Nine turned up empty. The evidence was there. The clustering was real. 
but the planet itself, it was like chasing a shadow. And that's when the doubt started creeping in. Now I know what you're thinking. If the evidence is so strong, why hasn't anyone found it yet? Well, that's exactly what some scientists started asking too. And their answer might surprise you. Because not everyone believed Planet Nine was real. In fact, some researchers thought the whole thing might be a trick of the data. Let me explain what I mean. The problem is this. The number of objects we're talking about is pretty small. And most of them were discovered by just a few surveys looking at the same parts of the sky at similar times of the year. That could create something called observational bias. It's like if you're standing in a dark forest with a flashlight and you point it in one direction and say, look, all the trees are over there. Well, maybe, or maybe that's just where you're shining the light. Some scientists like Samantha Lawler and Jean-Marc Pailly argued that the clustering might not mean anything at all. It could just be a coincidence, a fluke caused by how and where we search. But the Planet Nine supporters weren't giving up. They kept running simulations, recreating the solar system on computers, but this time adding a hidden ninth planet far beyond Neptune. And in many of those simulations, it worked. The strange orbits appeared. The clustering made sense. Planet Nine fit. But then other groups started testing different ideas. What if instead of one big planet, there was a massive disk of smaller objects acting together? What if passing stars from billions of years ago threw everything off? What if gravity itself behaves differently at those distances? These were real alternatives being seriously considered. And while most scientists didn't buy into modified gravity, the point was clear. Planet Nine was the cleanest explanation, but it wasn't the only one. And that's where things stood for a while. Stuck, no smoking gun, no direct evidence. Just a really compelling theory with no proof. Until something unexpected happened. Not in the sky, but in old data. Data from satellites that had been sitting in archives for decades. And what they found changed everything. Or did it? Stay with me, because this is where it gets wild. For a theory that kicked off with so much excitement, the search for Planet Nine eventually hit a wall. Not because the idea fell apart, but because the sky just wouldn't cooperate. After the 2016 announcement, astronomers everywhere began scanning the predicted areas. They used some of the best tools available. Pan stars, the Subaru telescope, the Dark Energy Survey, even archived data from the WISE mission, and they found absolutely nothing. But why? If this planet is so massive, why is it so hard to see? Well, think about it. If Planet Nine exists, it's hundreds of times farther from the sun than Earth. That means it reflects almost no sunlight. At that distance, even something the size of Neptune would be incredibly dim. You'd need to know exactly where to look, and even then it might barely show up. But here's the thing. Astronomers started wondering, what if Planet Nine had already been photographed years ago and we just didn't realize it? So they went digging. They pulled out data from iRACE and an infrared satellite from the 1980s. From Akari, a Japanese mission from the 2000s. From WISE, which scanned the entire sky in infrared back in 2010. These missions weren't looking for planets. They were mapping stars, galaxies, and heat sources. But buried in all that data were thousands of mysterious dots. Faint, slow-moving, unidentified, most of them turned out to be galaxies or noise. But what if one of them was something more? Then in early 2025, something incredible happened. A team went back through both IRAS and Akari archives and found something strange. A faint heat signature that appeared in both data sets about 20 years apart. And it had moved. Not much, but it moved. That's huge. Because galaxies don't move like that. Stars don't. Noise doesn't. But distant solar system objects do. Especially ones hundreds of astronomical units away. At first, this looked like exactly what everyone had been waiting for. A possible direct detection of Planet Nine. The object had the right kind of infrared signature. Cold. Faint. Consistent with a frozen planet radiating leftover heat from its formation. News outlets jumped on it. Headlines exploded, social media lit up, 
Was this finally it? Have we found Planet Nine? But then the excitement died down fast, because when they calculated the orbit, something was very wrong. Planet Nine is supposed to have an elongated orbit, sure, but relatively flat, tilted maybe 15 to 30 degrees from the main plane of the solar system. This new object, it was tilted over 120 degrees. That's not just a little off. That's basically upside down. It was moving in a retrograde orbit, going the opposite direction of almost everything else. And that's a problem, a big one. Because if this object doesn't match the predicted orbit, it can't be Planet Nine. At least not the Planet Nine that was supposed to explain the clustering. Mike Brown himself came out and said it. This isn't our Planet Nine. It might be real. It might be something we've never seen before. But it's not what we've been looking for. So, in the strangest twist, the most interesting object found in a decade didn't solve the mystery. It made it worse. Because now we have two problems. We still haven't found Planet Nine. And we just discovered something else that doesn't fit anywhere in our models. But wait, because it gets even more complicated. While everyone was focused on that infrared mystery, another discovery dropped. A brand new object called 2017 of 2011. On paper, it didn't seem like much. Just another dwarf planet way out past Neptune. But when astronomers calculated its orbit, jaws dropped. This thing was on a ridiculously stretched path, reaching out nearly 1,600 astronomical units at its farthest point. That's more than 30 times farther than Pluto ever gets. This was an extreme orbit, the kind that screams something powerful put me here. Naturally, people asked, is this more evidence for Planet Nine? At first, it looked like it could be. Planet Nine was predicted to fling objects into exactly these kinds of weird elongated orbits through gravitational interactions over millions of years. So 2017 of 2011 seemed like the smoking gun everyone wanted. But then came the closer look, and it didn't fit. Its orbit wasn't aligned with the other clustered objects. It was out of sync almost like it was following different rules. And that raised an uncomfortable question. If Planet Nine is supposed to explain the clustering, but we keep finding objects that don't fit the pattern, does that weaken the whole case? Some researchers started suggesting that maybe the pattern itself was never real. Maybe it's just observational bias. Maybe these are just random orbits caused by billions of years of chaos, and we're seeing patterns where none exist. But here's the thing. 2017 of 2011 exists. Something put it on that orbit. Whether it was Planet Nine or something else, it's a clue. Just not the kind that makes things clearer. The kind that makes the puzzle harder. And this is exactly where the mystery sits right now. We have compelling evidence. Strange orbits. Unexplained clustering. Mathematical models that work. But we also have objects that don't fit. Searches that come up empty and a growing list of alternative explanations. So what's the truth? Is Planet Nine real, or have we been chasing a ghost this whole time? Well, let me tell you something that might change how you see this whole thing. Let's say for a moment that Planet Nine is real, that somewhere out there, hundreds of times farther from the sun than we are, there's a world five to 10 times the mass of Earth. Cold, dark, invisible. The next question is obvious. How did it get there? Because here's the thing, it shouldn't be there. According to everything we know about how planets form, there simply wasn't enough material that far out to build something so massive. Beyond Neptune, the solar system thins out. The disk of gas and dust gets weaker. Everything slows down. You might get icy rocks forming. You might get comets. But a full planet? That's hard to explain. So if Planet Nine didn't form out there, where did it come from? One idea is that it formed much closer to the Sun. Maybe near Jupiter or Saturn. During the early chaotic days of the solar system, planets were constantly interacting, pushing and pulling on each other like bumper cars in slow motion. In that chaos, it's possible Planet Nine got kicked out, flung into the outer solar system by a gravitational interaction with one of the gas giants. But instead of escaping into interstellar space like most ejected planets would, it got caught. It ended up in a distant, elongated orbit, a solar system exile. Too far to see, but close enough to stay bound to the sun. And this isn't just speculation. Computer simulations back it up. 
When researchers model the early solar system, they often see one or two planets getting kicked into distant orbits. And in some of those simulations, the results look eerily similar to what Planet 9 is supposed to be. But there's another possibility, one that's even more mind-blowing. What if Planet 9 was never ours to begin with? Imagine the early sun forming inside a dense cluster of stars, surrounded by dozens or hundreds of baby stars all being born from the same cloud of gas and dust. In that crowded stellar nursery, planets and debris would be flying everywhere. And in those conditions, it's entirely possible that our sun stole a planet from another star. This is called planetary capture, and simulations show it's not just possible, it's likely. In a dense cluster, passing stars can grab rogue planets or even rip them from each other's orbits. If Planet 9 was originally circling another star and our sun passed close enough at the right moment, it could have been pulled in and trapped in a wide distant orbit. One study even suggested the chances of capturing a planet like that could be as high as 20% if conditions were right. And this would explain something important. If Planet 9 came from outside our solar system, its orbit wouldn't match the rest. It would be tilted. Stretched, unpredictable, just like the clues we're seeing now. So whether it formed here and got kicked out, or was stolen from another star, there are real plausible ways Planet 9 could exist without breaking any laws of physics. All it requires is time, chaos, and gravity. Three things the early solar system had in abundance. Which means Planet 9 isn't impossible, it's just hidden. But that might be about to change. Because after nearly a decade of dead ends, the search is about to hit a turning point. Not because someone spotted it, but because we're about to get a tool powerful enough to end the mystery once and for all. It's called the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, and when it comes online, it could change everything. Located in Chile, this isn't just another telescope. It's a game changer. Rubin is equipped with an 8.4 meter mirror, and the largest digital camera ever built for astronomy. Its mission is called the Legacy Survey of Space and Time, and it's designed to do one thing better than anything else. Survey the entire southern sky, over and over again, in incredible detail, for 10 years straight. This is the beauty of science. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes it's no. But the search itself reveals truths we never expected, and whether Planet Nine turns out to be real or just a cosmic mirage, the journey to find out has already taught us that our solar system is stranger, more dynamic, and more mysterious than we ever imagined. The outer reaches are not empty. They're full of surprises, and we've only just begun to explore them. Don't stop here. The universe is full of secrets waiting to be uncovered. Click on the next video and join us as we explore even more astonishing mysteries from the farthest reaches of space.